My name is Brian Fitz. I'm a lawyer in Houston, Texas that handles uh, refinery, uh, chemical, and industrial disasters all across the nation. I'm here today to talk to you about what to do if you are involved in an explosion. Most people that are involved in explosions start their day off just like any other day. They park their car in the parking lot, they go to the, through the turnstiles, and they do their job. And anybody that's worked offshore, offshore or in a, in a uh, plant or refinery situation knows that once you're working, it's very hard and, and quite often not allowed to have your cell phone. Uh, you leave that in your car. And so if you're in the plant and an explosion happens, Everybody scrambles. It's mass chaos. I've seen it and I've heard about it. Well, I haven't seen it personally, but I've, I've listened to witnesses give their recounts of what happened, and everybody was literally running for their lives. If you're watching this video, you or a loved one will have gotten out alive, which is wonderful, and it's, you're very, very fortunate. Now, what are they going to do after that? The first thing somebody needs to do after they've been involved in a plant or refinery explosion is to notify their family. This is very hard to do. Nowadays, nobody has their cell phone with them inside the plant, and if they don't have their cell phone, they have no way of notifying their friends and family. If you are involved in a large plant disaster, it's going to be on the news, and your loved ones are going to know about it. They're going to be very worried about you, and they're going to try to get as much information as they can about you as fast as possible. Where are you going to be? Most likely, the company who operates the facility will have you guys in some sort of an emergency um, facility. Sometimes it's a nearby church, sometimes it's a nearby school, sometimes it's a hospital. And they will do everything they can to get you off the premise so you're safe. But once they do that, they'll keep you confined in an area while they figure out who's there, count heads, make sure everybody got out safely, and try to figure out how to go rescue the people who didn't get out safely. That creates a problem for you because they're not going to give you a phone to call your loved ones. You need to do anything you can to try to get to your friends and family and let them know you're safe. Now, once you've done that, eventually they're going to dismiss you and you'll be able to go home. The problem is you probably won't be able to take your car home with you and you probably won't be able to get back to your car to get your cell phone. A lot of times they keep the parking lot locked up as evidence because they want to make sure they can inspect the entire scene and see what really happened. Sometimes they'll let you get in there and get your personal belongings, and sometimes you can get your truck, sometimes you can't. But after this, as soon as you get home, you need to focus on getting the medical treatment you need. Now, the company, uh, whoever owned the facility or whoever you were working for, will probably tell you, hey, we've got a doctor you can go see. I would go see that doctor as a last resort. The reason why is because that doctor's sole job is to make sure you can go back to work. They're not there to make sure you get healed. I've seen it so many times where somebody goes in there and reports knee pain and the doctor says, oh, your knee's just sprained, you'll be fine, go back to work. What ends up happening, they turn out, six months later they learn that their knee needs to be scoped. That's a big deal. And had they saw a doctor who didn't have a vested interest in them going back to work, they would have found that knee injury much, much, much sooner. So get the medical care you need. That is your most important thing. And when you go see a doctor, make sure you report all of your injuries. Think about your sleeping at night. Are you still able to sleep? Are you having bad dreams, which is commonly called PTSD? Did you suffer any hearing loss, which is quite common in these ex accidents because the explosion is so loud. Even if you had hearing protection on, the hearing protection is blown out and you experience ringing in your ears and sometimes permanent hearing loss. And finally, if, if your orthopedic injuries, you know, you may just have neck pain at first, but as the neck, name, neck pain begins to subside, you'll notice back pain. So make sure you document all your injuries and make sure you tell the doctor on your first visit exactly what's going on. And you've got to tell them everything that's going on because if you don't, uh, down the road, the company who you're trying to ask to pay for your medical bills and compensate you for your losses will try to say that you're exaggerating or you've made up your injuries. So whenever you get your treatment after the accident, make sure you report all of your injuries and completely report your injuries. 
Finally, you need to make sure you're getting treatment for your emotional well-being. Most people that are involved in an explosion think that, hey, you know, my back's hurt, my neck's hurt. Pick whichever major injury you've got that's preventing you from earning a living for your family. But a lot of times people ignore their emotional well-being. The emotional well-being is what I would describe as post-traumatic stress. I've met with hundreds of individuals who have been involved in plant or refinery explosions, and they will often report to you years later that they are still having problems emotionally. They're still having nightmares. You've got to deal with those. You've got to get treatment. You've got to find a psychologist or a psychiatrist who can help you work through those issues. They don't heal overnight, and sometimes they're lasting forever. Now, if you don't know where to find your medical care, I strongly recommend you contact an explosion lawyer who has experience who can get you to doctors who will treat you fairly and completely. If you go to the company doctors, you run the risk of them trying to get you back to work just as soon as possible so they can say you're not injured. Our jobs as refinery explosion lawyers is to make sure you get the best medical care possible and you get put back into the best shape possible as you were before the explosion. Our job also is to get you as much money as we can from the company who caused the explosion to make sure or to do our very best to put you back in the same place you were before the explosion. If you have any questions about this video, please call us at 1-800-99-FITS or contact us on our website. Thank you.